Welcome back once again. Now, what the hell's going on with my hair? I really do need a haircut. It's not looking too good. Um, yeah, anyway, should you only eat when you are hungry? Now, this is a question that probably so many people in the fitness world will answer differently to a lot of people in the functional medicine world who would answer differently to people in other worlds of health and so on. But this information or this question, I'm going to answer it based on the experience that I've had working with 25 different countries, no, people in 25 different countries. That was 24 last week. The 25th different country signed up this week over the last 15 years. And over that time, there's been thousands and thousands of people. I actually looked at my folder the other day and like directly on like one to one, it's been like over 3000 people, which is pretty, pretty crazy to think of it. Um, that if every single one of those people had like impacted five people, for example, with the knowledge that I'd given them, that's like 15,000 people. And if they even impacted one person, I literally fill a whole football stadium of people that has been impacted with the knowledge that has been up here. And that doesn't even go for podcasts. Like, you ever look back and think, Jesus, I'm pretty proud of some of the impact that I've had. But anyway, I digress. Should I only eat when I'm hungry? No, not in my opinion. Because if we actually look at what hunger is and why people say it, I absolutely get it that we shouldn't eat when we're not hungry. Because then that means we're listening to the body. I absolutely get that. But is the body actually hungry? So when we actually think back and we sit there and our stomach is rumbling or something like that, or we think we're hungry, are we actually hungry? Uh, or is your blood glucose a little bit lower than it should be? Or is it higher than it should be? Is the management off? Are we tired? No doubt that just like myself, you may have been one of these people that when you go to, uh, you go through a stressful period, are you stressed? Or when you go through a time when you're fatigued and you get later at night, you might think you're hungry, but you're not actually hungry. Could it also be linked with habit that you're starting to get hungry because of habit? Or could it also be that you're dehydrated? When we actually think of hunger, there are so many different things that could be actually going on rather than our body being hungry. Now, if you're one of these people that suffers from hanger, and people laugh and joke about hanger so much, but actually what hanger is, is usually problems with your blood glucose management. So we have time between food, our blood glucose drops, and as a result, we get really tetchy and frustrated. And then someone comes and speaks to us and we massively flip out at them for no reason. Yeah, we laugh and joke about it. But every time we get hangry, we are potentially causing inflammation in the body. And if we have poor blood glucose management, one of the signs of that is if food changes how we actually feel. So you start getting fatigued, you have food, and then you start getting energetic. Now, why I don't believe and honestly don't feel that people should eat only when they're hungry is because your body works on a circadian rhythm. And what this rhythm is, is your natural body clock based on when the sun rises and the sun falls and how much daylight we get. Now, also linked in with this circadian rhythm is the rise of cortisol and the fall of cortisol. The rise of melatonin, which helps us sleep and relax in the evenings and go and actually get deep restorative sleep. What also is linked in with this is our detoxification, de, 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 I can't speak today, obviously, um, our detoxification systems. All these things are linked in with our circadian rhythm. Then we get release of things that actually take the sugar from the food and store it in the cells or gets it utilized or puts it into fat cells and so on. We get our liver function, our kidney function, our organs all function on their own body clock. And one of the things that does happen a lot when it comes to our circadian rhythm is that enzymes are released with our food that 
or for our food and to digest our food. So we get into these habits. And one of the one of the quickest ways you can break, for example, if you've ever been jet lagged, is by simply waking up based on local time and having your first meal at what would be the normal breakfast time. Now, if we only eat when we're hungry, you could then get to say 10 p.m. at night, we're hungry and your body has started its detoxification process. And in this detoxification process, it's not like about doing juice fast or seven day detox or anything like that. Basically, what happens is we start rejuvenating cells and we start rejuvenating stomach lining. We start clearing out a lot of rubbish that's in the body. Now, one of the ways I describe this, and you've probably heard me describe it like this on different videos that I've done before, is if you think of a busy airport, so you think of like Heathrow Airport or JFK or LAX, wherever it is, and through the day, there's these planes coming and going left, right, and center, like every 30, 40 seconds. It's a really, really busy place. But if you've ever caught like um, a red-eye flight and you've left at like 11 p.m., and for example, actually, when I came back from Philadelphia, I had a four-hour delay. So I was in Philadelphia International Airport. There was a four-hour delay. And I went into the lounge, and beforehand, it was really, really busy. There was people all the time. And when I actually queued up to get on my flight at 11 p.m., there was literally just the people from our flight. But what there was going on about was very important jobs. There was people doing repair work, maintenance guys doing a lot of their repairing there were people that were there doing the cleaning, people that were restoring, restocking the vending machines. And all these things essentially happen in your body through the night. And we repair neurons, we repair cells, we take out dead neurons in our brain. We detoxify our system, our kidneys work over time, our liver works over time, and we burn quite a lot of energy in the nighttime. And if we break that process by waking up and being hungry, then we need to restart that all again. So if you only ate when you were hungry, and for example, you ate at 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. and you're hungry, you start breaking these processes that the body actually relies on. Now, one of the things I do recommend with people is just to be consistent with their eating habits. So if you have breakfast, always have breakfast roughly around the same time. Maybe within about 30 minutes, either way. So if you always have breakfast at 7 a.m., always have it between 6.30 and 7.30. If you always have lunch around 1 p.m., always have it between half 12 and half 1. The same with your evening meal, the same with snacks. Your body gets used to regulating this way, and it starts to release enzymes. It starts to release insulin, which is this thing which grabs the sugar, the glucose from those, uh, the food that you in, like, induce, the food that you eat, and it pulls it to the cells where it produces energy or it goes to help detoxification. Um, it helps clear out oxidants and loads of free radical damage. We don't have to go down that route, but it helps do what it's meant to do. Now, if you've ever been, again, let's use the flight as an example, you've been to an early flight and you've had to wake up like here in Norwich. Uh, if I wanna go to Heathrow, it's like three, three and a bit hours away depending if you want to stop 10 times to the toilet or one time to the toilet, or you get stuck in traffic, you get stuck behind a tractor going out this one bloody road out of Norwich or not. Now, when we get up early, and we're not used to getting up that early, you might try and force your body to have breakfast, but it doesn't seem to work. You end up feeling a little bit bloated, you don't digest the food as effectively and so on. Our body is really tightly regulated on this circadian rhythm. And as I said, every organ in the body has its own body clock. And one of the last body clocks to actually adjust is your digestion, is your gut health. And what makes it more effective with adjusting and, and getting into our actual rhythm is that timing of our meals. So if you literally only ate until when you were hungry, then fatigue is going to get into play. The stress or anxiety levels are going to come into play hydration is going to come into play habits are going to come into play your blood glucose levels and all these different things are going to come into play now i absolutely get it that some days you will eat later some days you will eat earlier because of schedule now it is just looking at what is the habit you can use and you can utilize for the most amount of time now for example myself after i've done a lot of work on blood glucose management and i now know that 
my blood glucose is in a really, really good place. And I could go a long while without eating if I wanted to. That I eat with time restricted eating, or what people say a lot of intermittent fasting. But when I competed in bodybuilding, my blood glucose management, my stress levels were all over the show. If I went more than about two, two and a half hours without eating, I had these drops in energy and, and so on. So after I cleared all that up, I started eating in a time restricted eating window, which started off at 12 hours, which is very easy to do, then 10 hours, then eight. But I don't go before that. And it's only about 90% of the time. Like, for example, Thursday night, we went out to London. Uh, and there's a mastermind I'm part of the Dynamite Circle. They had a monthly meetup, met up with some awesome folks and stayed at a friend's house. So we were up a little bit later and we had food a little bit later. On Saturday night, we had a Freemasons meetup. So we had this nice, lovely free course meal. But inevitably, it happened a little bit later than I would normally stop eating at about eight o'clock. But 90% of the time, I start eating around half 11, 12, depending on when I've got a call. And I stop eating around half 7, 8, 8, 30 roughly around those times not a dead on hard stop if i haven't eaten my last mouthful by 7:59 and 59 seconds i stop i just get it done and that is what i would suggest what you would do is once you manage your blood sugar levels eat consistently consistently don't wait until you're hungry because that could mean that you need to get some water in don't wait until like you're fatigued or anything like that don't wait until you're hungry because it's not gonna be as regulated. If you truly want to improve your energy levels, if you truly want to improve your focus, get rid of brain fog, get your hormonal levels balanced because it makes it so, so, so much easier to lose weight, be consistent with your regular meal times, with your snack times, with your food types, not necessarily the foods exactly, but food types, have a good level of protein, get some level of consistency. Do not just eat when you're hungry because it might be that one day you don't get hungry until 3 p.m. And then if you're pretty stubborn like myself, I can convince myself I'm not hungry. And then I'll push. Oh, I can add an extra half an hour onto that. So it's 3.30. And then before you know it, it's 6 p.m. before you have your first meal. And then as a result, you actually get more fatigued. Now, you're having your first meal later. We then eat a lot more junk afterwards because we're just a lot more tired and so on. Have some level of consistency. Spread your food through the day. Your digestion will thank you for it. You'll probably sleep better as well. If you need help with this, you know exactly where I am. Drop me a message and we can talk about what would work for you. I've got multiple different ways of working with myself, starting with monthly work when it comes to group coaching. I've got my uh, full health screening and I've got my full one-to-one -one coaching. So drop me a message and I can advise what would be right for you to help you move your health forward. Please, please, please listen to your body's body clock and be consistent with it to get the most out of your health. Thank you for watching.